Welcome back to Consider This. Melissa and Sharad here with you tonight. We have Datuk Ma Wenkwai, a member from the Judicial Appointments Commission, on the show to discuss. Um, I want to touch on the Judicial Appointments Act, which is uh, what the commission was set up under. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, the, the role of it is to uphold the continuous independence of the judiciary. Could you elaborate what that means? What does the in independence of the judiciary entail? I would like to start by saying that uh, the independence has to come from within. And uh, if the selection process is done properly, we get uh, candidates of, uh, uh, of caliber and people not just eligible by years of experience or years of practice, but people who display all the uh, accepted uh, qualities of a good judge. And uh, once we know that there is this uh, pool of good people uh, who would uh, honor the Constitution, uh, we practice uh, constitutional supremacy, not parliamentary supremacy, uh, people who understand and respect the rule of law. Uh, so when it comes to any particular case which uh, can be debatable, uh, then these people will stand their ground and say, look, this is the way to do it right. Can you, could you go further into the discussion of uh, our constitutional supremacy? It's something that's perhaps counterintuitive in a, in a Malaysian context after many years of not just a, a, a parliament that has changed the constitution many times, but also a very strong executive branch. Uh, what is constitutional supremacy? What would it look like? I can uh, go by way of example, uh, where we acknowledge and uh, uh, agree that the constitution is supreme, supreme law of the land. Uh, take the two recent cases of, uh, of Semeni Jaya, and uh, Indira Gandhi, both these cases, federal court uh, cases with a full bench, uh, the decision is that, look, judicial power belongs to the courts, not to the executive. So that's a very clear spell out of what constitutional supremacy really means. Mm. Can you talk a bit about the public perception of the Malaysian judiciary at the moment? Is it seen to be independent from the public's point of view, you reckon? I would like to think and believe that uh, people do think that the Malaysian judiciary is independent, uh, but um, we can't just be saying this without proof mm. in that, uh, as they say, the proof of the cooking is in the eating. Mm. Um, but uh, we have the, the judiciary will have to stand out and be counted and uh, to show that the, the decisions are really uh, independent. Um, let's say in the Court of Appeal or in the Federal Court where the panel is you know, three and the Federal Court five, seven, nine even. Um, there, are, there have been cases where judges uh, disagree with the uh, majority decision and really for the development of the law, uh, the dissenting judges are encouraged to write their dissenting judgments. Yeah? So this I see has been happening uh, more frequently and very recently in the Bin Abdullah case. Mm -hmm. That was a majority decision, yes. but there were decisions written by uh, the dissenting uh, judges. Why? If you could explain, why is a dissenting judgment important, not just to have, but to actually sit down uh, on, on paper? What, what does it do to judicial culture and you know, the, the legal fraternity? It's not just a numbers game, right? Not just a 4-3 or 3-2, uh, 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 um, not a football game. But uh, <laughs> it's very important that um, the public, uh, the Malaysian public, get to see how judges uh, think and you can only uh, look at it through their judgments. Right. You, know, you read the judgments and you'll uh, realize uh, or appreciate your arguments. Right. Uh, and, and on that note, how would one go about uh, assessing or evaluating the quality of the judiciary of judgments? It has to be merit-based. Yeah? And uh, judges must be seen to have fully understood the facts uh, of the case, to have fully appreciated the law and apply the facts to the law and vice versa uh, so that uh, it is a holistic uh, judgment. Um, we cannot, cannot at any time tolerate any judgment which is not written by the judge himself. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been such allegations from time to time. We mostly cannot have cut and paste judgments. Uh, all this must be frowned upon and, uh, uh, and, and the judges should in fact be pulled up and uh, spoken to. Um, so, as far as quality is concerned, we want to know, uh, firstly, the judges must know what the case is all about and they must show their uh, uh, integrity, uh, industriousness and uh, the sense of fairness 
yeah, that you have considered both cases. See, as a lawyer, we only tend to always look at one side of the case. If right. you're acting for the plaintiff, it's a plaintiff's <laughs> case. And if it's a defense, defendant's case. But as a judge, you have to balance up both cases and see what is the true uh, position to see whether it's fair and whether it's reasonable. Um, the other, of course, that uh, when you talk about uh, uh, industriousness and being on time, there is a requirement that judges must write their judgments um, within eight weeks of the delivery of the judgment. And uh, you can be faulted if you uh, are beyond that time. And uh, really, um, if you have uh, judges, uh, 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 judges, um, JCs rather, JCs, and uh, judges, JCs who have more than three judgments outstanding, more than uh, 60 days, will not be looked upon wow. fondly. Okay. So, okay, so, so they, they have their KPIs. Yeah. They have their KPIs. We don't call it KPIs, KPIs. but they, these are benchmarks, benchmarks that they have to follow. Okay. I, I do want to ask you about the standing of the, the Malaysian judiciary in, in, in the kind of larger Commonwealth, the, the same legal system, uh, cite, citing judgments from India, citing judgments. I mean, it seems that judicial culture and this, the, these, the intellectual uh, aspect of it is something that goes beyond the boundaries of the country, right? I mean, to what extent do Malaysian judgments uh, punch above their weight? I mean, are we, sure. are we creating judgments that other countries are looking at? Well, judgments are as good as the submissions of lawyers. Um, and uh, a lot depends on what the, uh, the lawyers are actually uh, submitting. But very often, and it's not uh, unknown, the judges will do their own research on the particular points of law. And uh, reference to Indian cases, American cases, British cases, of course, is frequent. And uh, yes, punching above their weight uh, is uh, not uncommon and I think it should be encouraged because even though a council may not have uh, touched on a particular point, but if the judge finds that it is relevant and important, sure, by all means. How do we encourage that? You know, I mean, that's an interesting, interesting way to, to, uh, to put it, right? How do we encourage, um, I guess, you know, punching above our weight How do, for our judiciary? Again. I will go back to the point of selection. Okay. So a lot of importance must be attached to the selection, starting from the JC uh, level. Begins yeah, at, as you know, at the very beginning. At the selection. very beginning. Can, so can I very quickly ask, so are judges trained to be judges? No. They're not. No. Okay. So it just comes with a wealth of experience. Right. So <laughs> can I can just elaborate on yes, this point? Sure. Training of judges. Sure. And this is where the Judicial Academy uh, plays a role. Uh, under the JAC, we have the Judicial Academy in fact, now it's headed by a federal court judge who is one of the members of uh, JAC, uh, uh, Dr. Sri uh, um, uh, Zawawi. And uh, his job uh, and his committee is to arrange for programs and workshops for especially JCs who have just been uh, taken in so that they will know and learn about the art of uh, judging. Mm. Yeah. But there's no uh, requirement that uh, there's any particular training before they get selected, unlike Philippines. Oh, the Philippines, the Philippines have a judicial academy where applicants must go for a course before they get taken into the That's judiciary. So ours is uh, uh, in-house after appointment. <laughs> sure, okay. I know you had a question, sure, yes. but we're well, going to we'll take, take a, a quick break. break. Okay, <laughs> we'll right. be right back. More on Consider This. Don't go anywhere.